it is already time to start for the next session. Okay, so please. Okay, let's start again. Now I'll talk about perspective in the next generation PFAR. Current PFAR is, in my opinion, very low level. They are not using any advanced technology. But in the next generation PFAR, we have to use advanced technology uh, to improve productivity further. Plant factory research and business started in 1960, 60 years ago, using high pressure sodium lamp. Then from 1990, we started using fluorescent tubes. But at that time, it's still, it was still difficult to make money as a business. But from 2010, LED was used. And now we are entering to the fourth way of FIFA using artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, ICT, Omics, Robot, etc. But we still do not know how to use them. The technology to be implemented to improve the productivity of the people, for example, smart LED lighting system, a microprocessor, memories and DNA sequencers, and cameras and sensors with AI, IoT, ICT, virtual reality, or augmented reality, and solar cells and batteries. This is luminous efficiency or light conversion efficiency from electric energy of light sources. This is high pressure sodium. This is 1960. And this is fluorescent tube. And white LEDs are developed, nearly commercialized in 2010. Then luminous efficiency increased very sharply. And now, experts are developing white organic LED or uh, uh, purple LED, which efficiency uh, is uh, higher than white LEDs. So we can believe that electricity cost will be reduced further in FIFA. And thanks to this smart home, we can use many small cameras, inexpensive cameras, which can be connected to a smart home. 3D camera, night vision camera, feature camera, and summer camera, near infrared camera, uh, volatile, volatile organic compound sensor, biosensor. These are all 300 US dollars or 400 US dollars, something like this. So we have to use these cameras in the next generation P file. the trend of price of silicon photovoltaic solar cells. Solar cells price per watt has been decreasing very sharply. And now cost of electricity generation 
is lower in the solar cell than uh, nuclear power generation. This price of battery has also been decreased. This is logarithmic scale, dollar per kilowatt hour. This price decrease is occurring because of popularity of EV cars. So we can use solar cells or generate electricity or lighting in the plant factory using battery too. So we can say light energy generated from natural energy will become cost effective alternative to the light energy generated by fossil fuel and nuclear power. And light energy is much more efficiently used in the FIFA than in the greenhouse and open field because we can control other environment. But now there are many challenges we have to solve. Number one, we can create any environment which can never occur in nature. This is a challenge and this is a possibility, but we don't know how we can create entirely new environment. For example, normally solar light is provided downward from top to down. But we can provide light from the bottom. We can provide LED here at the bottom of plant. Then we don't know how plant respond. Well, we can insert LEDs inside the plant can canopy. We don't know how plants respond, but maybe we can make a huge profit, huge money, but we still do not know. Also, time shift writing of monochromatic light, uh, pinpoint writing, only to bad. Because it's, it is so small. Well, we can provide air not horizontally, but upward. On the other hand, we have not yet developed any methodology to find an optimal set of environmental factors to maximize the productivity under given condition. But if developed such a methodology, we can establish a new field of plant science suited to PFAR environment, just like plant science for space farming. So we have a big challenge. Now, I can talk all of them yet, but also we need to breed a new cultivar suited to PFAR because all cultivars bred are bred for open field workhouse. We want to grow plants in open field or in the greenhouse. Resistance to disease, but resistance to environment stress, most important. But in PFAR, we don't need any resistance to disease, especially for pests, insects. Well, we don't need any resistance to environmental stress. We don't know how to breed this. 
plant. How we can use this uh, characteristics of plant? But it's a big challenge. Any human do not know what will happen. But maybe this is a very big chance. Also, in the plant factory, we keep CO2 concentration at around 1,000 ppm. Yeah? So, plants, if plants grow very well at 1,000 ppm of CO2 concentration, it's a big advantage because cost of CO2 is very low. But we have no cultivars at present, which grow very well under high CO2 concentration and low right intensity. But maybe someone breed such a cultivar. Then productivity would be doubled easily. But we still do not know. So I'll show you only some examples of select topics on the next general FIFA. Smart energy lighting, phenotyping, breeding, com com complexity of plant event and relationship and modeling and simulation. Um, because all of you know the role of light for plants. One is energy source for photosynthesis and another is a signal source for photomorphogenesis, and secondary metabolite production, and some opening or other biological response. So we have to provide light both for energy source, as energy source and signal source. When we look that let us it seems growth is very uniform. But actually, the, this, is a, this is a histogram of fresh weight. Fresh weight varies very widely. We still do not know why. Because this variation in fresh weight is due to the maybe genetic reason or um, difference in seed processing or environmental effect or effect of humans or machines, how to treat them. But in my opinion, we can reduce this radiation. We can improve productivity a lot, but we do not know. Because of this, automation is very difficult. Some plants are very small to pick up by robot. But this is my prediction. Oh. Now, first, everybody knows single leaf absorbed around 90% of blue and red light because of chlorophyll A and B absorption burn. And transmit 30% of green light and reflects 20% of green light. And reflects and transmit 40% each of far red light. This is but only for single leaf, not plant as a whole, not plant community. If you talk about plant community, everything has been changed. So in a densely populated plant community, blue and red 
decreases. At the uppermost leaf, the all absorbed by uppermost leaf. So, leaves inside do not receive any blue and red light. Lower leaves receive green light and far red light mostly. Maybe this is not good for PHR manager. How then, how we can improve writing system? How we can use green light effectively? How we can provide blue and right energy to the lower river? There are many challenges, and we can improve productivity. By developing such a smart LED lighting system, we can improve the productivity a lot more. Several, several years ago, in all people, they used only blue and red LEDs. But now, most LEDs use white LEDs. White LEDs contain a lot of green light, from here to here, 500 to 600. But the percentage of green light varies by manufacturers. Some white LEDs contain only 5% of green light. Some other LEDs contain 45% of green light. But they are called all called green, now white LEDs. So white LED is saying nothing. Also, green light affects not only photosynthesis, but also affects morphology, plant architecture, secondary metabolic production, and disease resistance. But this is a new area of research, plant science. We do not know much about the effect of green light. In plant factory at Biotech, you saw green LEDs. So they may discover new fact. So, thanks to LEDs, LEDs we can get LEDs which emit only ultraviolet, or blue, green, red, or far red. Very cheap. So, the challenge is how to use these LEDs to improve the productivity. This is also a new challenge and will become very important in the next generation people. So, we have brutal violet LED, blue, green, red, violet, and white LED. As we wish, but we don't know what is the best. Nobody have done yet, but this is my imagination. We may give green light for three hours, green, hour, green light only. Then for next two hours, we give red only. Then what, how, 
respond to this right environment. So this kind of experiment can be done very easily. If you are lucky, you can claim patent new method or promote growth or produce secondary metabolite. The one Korean professor, Byon Leon Jung, conducted this uh, experiment for night interruption effect of green, blue, red, far red, and white on flowering and morphogenesis of chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum is a short day plant and a 16 hour photo period. So they provided right here for us using green, red, blue, far red LED. There was no paper. Until uh, he conducted. Then he found monochromatic writing for interrupt, night interruption affect not only the flowering but also morphology. This kind of Experiment can be done by everyone. And this one. Short day chrysanthemum can be used for pot as pot brand, pot chrysanthemum. Long chrysanthemum can be used for cut brand. In the next generation people, we can control morphology in this way. Dutch company developed plant factory for high wire from five meters. And And because they are using LED, no farad LED, uh, no farad light is emitted. Then, internal becomes very short. In the greenhouse, the many farther drive. Then internal elongate. Also, they provide light from the sky. Then, no aging of lower rim. Four four. But this is just the beginning of a new technology in the PIFA. We may use dwarf PIFA this height. Like this. Which is not enough, which is more economical? Which provides higher productivity? I'm going to say, sorry. <laughs> but, so maybe, I think, tomatoes, especially cherry tomato, and strawberry can be cultivated in the pea farm economically within two, three years, uh, but I don't know. But now many companies, many researchers are conducting this kind of research. But this PFAR, developed by a Dutch company, are now mainly used by American companies 
for cannabis cultivation instead of tomato. So, under such condition, phenotyping is becoming the most important technology in the FIFA. Plant phenotyping is defined as methodologies and the protocols to measure plant specific traits non invasively, in non destructively using various kinds of cameras, ranging from the cellular level to canopy level, related to plant structure and the function. So phenotyping will become a keyword in PFAR technology. Plant phenotype to be measured in PFAR will be net photosynthesis, a canopy structure, three-dimensional structure, and chemical component, and rate of translation, water uptake nutrient, and optical and thermal properties of plants. All of these plant traits can be measured continuously and automatically. And plant rates affecting the economic value of vegetables include the shape, color, texture, functional components such as the vitamin C, uh, antioxidant substances such as the polyphenols, uh, carotenoids, uh, polysaccharides, uh, minerals, and physiological disorders such as tipa, intumescence, or white black spot due to micronutrient deficiencies, and taste, flavor, flavor, mouth feeling, shelf life. These, all of these plant rays will become measurable in the next generation PFAR. That's because it's airtight and isolated. Summary. So phenotyping will become an essential tool in the next generation P5 for environmental control and breeding for selection, DNA sequencing, and omics. P5 can be used not only for production, but also for breeding at the same time by using camera, they are monitoring plant individually. Yeah. If some plant grow very well, probably because of genetic uh, reason, they pick up this and use for breeding. If it's very small, probably due to genetic reason, they also pick up it to breed dwarf, dwarf plants, dwarf, dwarf cultivars. And they are producing 20,000, 30,000 plants. So they can breed new cultivar very easily with no cost. And if you are interested, robot will sample the leaf for DNA sequencing. That is also a part of phenotyping. So this is a phenotyping-based environmental control of the breeding. We can measure environment continuously very easily. We already have a good database for genotype. And all, mostly they are for public use. 
and we can record the management data when we transplanted, when we harvested, uh, when we transplanted. Then, but measurement FIFA, uh, phenotype had been done manually. But we, if we can measure phenotype or plant rate automatically, we can get a huge data set of plant in relation to management, phenotype, environment, genotype, and omics. Every 10 minutes. It's too much data for analysis by human. So we have to ask AI computer to analyze. If I show you more detail, of course, seed processing data is necessary, and plant canopy structure is necessary. But these can be measured by camera, a different type of camera, automatically. And of course, we can measure supply rates of all kind of resource continuously. So we can set a much larger data set in the next generation people. It's a big science. So we can get data, for example, phenotype data, as a function of environment, management, resource, etc. And we can get this data automatically. So this shows a graph of big data set to be used for machine learning or deep learning, uh, multivariate uh, multi statistics, behavior model, or mechanistic model. We can get environment data, uh, phenotype data, genome data, omics data, management data, resource supply data, etc. Then, plant factory technology will be connected with plant molecular biology or genomic science. And it can be used for not only environment control, but also for breeding. And we are developing this kind of data warehouse for unification and the utilization of all types of data. On-site data collection and cloud computing and using open data, machine learning software, visualization software, and statistical analysis software, and image processing software. We can use all this software free of charge or very <coughs> at low price. But only young people can do this. So breeding of cultivars suited to people, for example, is, as I said, grow fast at high planting density, low photosynthetic photon flux density, and high CO2 concentration, and enhanced production of target function component, such as vitamin C, or antioxidant substances, and resistance to physiological disorders, such as deep burn, and low resistance to environmental and disease stresses, and dwarf root vegetables and medicinal plants, and fruit vegetables with short internode, 
uh, compact functional ribs and roots. These are related not only to genetic uh, phenotype, but also environment. And cell formation, uh, personal therapy of strawberry tomatoes. We need these strawberry tomatoes uh, because otherwise we have to use bees or honeybees or cetera, uh, no, no, bumblebees, etc. But now, in the United States, many breeders already started to breed this kind of new cultivar. But still, we don't know a methodology how to decide set point of multiple environmental factors. Because a set of set points cannot be determined not only by the plant growth. You have to consider market price. We have to consider policy and goals. We have to consider resource availability. And we also have to con predict weather and climate, not for plant production, but they are affecting market price. So we have to optimize these factors to get maximum productivity, or maximum monetary productivity or resource productivity. Now, this is done by an expert, human expert. But uh, in the future, in the next generation people, computer will do this. But even though we have to understand the basics of plant science or plant physiology deeply, writing cost for the synthesis is the highest cost among the cost for environment control, as I said. And also, uh, right energy use efficiency is currently very low. And temperature, CO2 concentration, vapor pressure deficit, nutrient solution, etc. need to be controlled to maximize the right energy use efficiency. Because cost for controlling temperature, CO2, etc. very low compared to the cost for writing. And writing cost for photomorphogenesis is minimal because it's a signal not energy process. Although the initial investment for its control is high, and photomorphogenesis is affected by right spectral distribution, um, physiological status of plant, and many other factors. But probably plant morphogenesis will become a very important control factor in the future. Morphogenesis affects economic value of growth. And photosynthesis and photomorphogenesis interact each other. So you have to consider this interaction. Above all, right, env right environmental effects on plant growth are affected by many other environmental factors, such as temperature, etc. But this can be modeled based on plant science. This part can be modeled by using plant growth model. We don't need AI model because we have a lot of 
knowledge and experience in this area. But we have to integrate all compartment models into one model. I am asked very often, what is the optimal PPFD? So I say, or oh, maybe 150 micromole. Sometimes 200, sometimes 170. But I have no reason. It's not evidence-based. Because optimal PPFD is affected by many factors, such as lighting cycle, lighting direction, CO2 concentration, vapor pressure deficit, temperature, nutrient solution, cultivar, growth stage, purpose of production. Horizontal axis is the PPFD, and vertical axis is the net photosynthesis. So optimum PPFD depends on the right quality, CO2 concentration, air current speed, and nutrient solution composition and strength, and nutrient flow rate, and vapor pressure deficit, etc. All were interrelated. So we cannot find optimum PPFD by experiments only. Because if we, we, we try to conduct experiment by changing each factor at three levels, low, middle, high, we need over four million treatment. We cannot conduct such a big experiment. So we need some model. But there are four types of model. Mechanistic model, and statistical model, behavior model, and AI model. Mass and energy balance, or plant growth, photosynthesis can be modeled using mechanistic model. But multivariate statistical model must be used for finding the effect of environment on the flavor, or taste, or mass feeling. It's too complicated to analyze physiologically. And if it's more complicated, we need artificial intelligence model. But we already have big data set already that we can try. And it can be merged into one software in the next generation people. Mechanics model for expressing dynamic phenotypic, phenotypic traits rate variables and resource use efficiencies, all of which can be measured online in the PFAR, include net photosynthetic rate, dust respiration rate, water uptake rate, transpiration rate, fresh weight increase rate, iron uptake rate, and light and energy use efficiencies, water use efficiencies, CO2 use efficiencies. These are very simple and can be measured and estimated accurately. But these are only the simplest part of PFAR. If you want to conduct experiment on secondary metabolite production, not for a single day, but big plant community, the station is much more complicated. All these factors 
are related. And each leaf is surrounded by different environment. So we need to develop new methodology how to optimize the secondary metabolite production. In some cases, our target plant secondary metabolite are contained mainly in flowers or seeds. In some cases, leaves. Some cases, in roots. And all are related. But still, we have to find optimum set of environmental factors. This is a very challenging, very interesting new area of field. Uh, in, this is in Hypericum. Uh, to get uh, hypericin, uh, this is a medicinal plant, done by uh, Zobide and uh, his colleague in 2005. They found hypericin is significantly controlled in flower bud, but mostly in leaves and stem. Now, by using LED, we can control flower flowering of hypericum. So we have to decide we should make flower as early as possible or we do not produce any environment to flower. But in this case, we have to consider the cost and productivity. And this also affected by temperature. One of the interesting thing is that plants are already moving like this. So even though we are providing the same environment, the same light environment, plants receive different light energy, different spectra. And it, this movement might be affected by airflow speed or uh, interaction between neighbor plants or VP, uh, vapor pressure deficit or photo period, etc. But, but this is also a new area of research. Optimiz optimization of plant production considering diurnal changes or movement of plants. So our team is now conducting plant cohort research. And this means collecting time series data of traits of individual plants. Because we can use many small cameras, low price, low price cameras. We can monitor each plant individually. So we are trying to collect plant trait data for each plant from seeding to harvest. Then we found, now we are finding what time the seeds 
germinate. This is a very simple problem. Problem that we can judge the germination time by camera. Yeah. But some seeds germinate within 24 hours after seeding. Some others germinate three days later. Probably due to the genetic property, or environmental difference, or some human management, or seed processing, we should not know. But in the next generation PFAR, we can control and analyze to get more uniform germination time and improve productivity. And my final goal is energy autonomous, autonomous sustainable people. We use solar energy or wind power generation system to uh, provide light to plant. And also, this, we should develop evolutional dual PFAR, which is not networked. In virtual PFAR, there is simulation model. And dual PFAR send all data to virtual PFAR. The virtual PFAR simulate and predict the output. And then we can compare the old output from virtual PFAR and actual PFAR. If there are some differences, we can adjust the parameter values. This can be used for improving the productivity. This can be used for educational purposes, for training purposes. This is already done by, for airplane, or automobile, or any other industry area. And also, PFAR can be connected um, with a mushroom factory, aquaculture system, or fermentation system, uh, etc. Okay. Conclusion. Principle of PFAR design and management, management was outlined in this talk and the productivity of current PFAR was analyzed. And the productivity of current PFAR can be doubled within several years, if we work hard. I'm too old to do so. And can be further improved by introducing recent advanced technology, such as AI. And the PFAR can contribute to solving the local and global food, resource, environment, and health issue. Thank you very much for your listening. So, any questions? Hello. Uh, it, seem, it seems like we are moving towards the data-driven PFAO. And I think every, everybody talking a lot about using the data to control or to do the management to, to make a decisions in, in PFAO. Um, however, there is a uh, interesting uh, discussion panel like two years ago uh, in U.S. where they have uh, many, uh, I think three or four companies that are doing the uh, PFAL business in U.S. and fail, and fail. Uh, there are companies called Farm Here in Chicago which already stopped 
And there are also companies called Potsponic, which is already stopped too. And they are talking about the reason why they fail. And one of the reasons that has been pointed out is that they collect a lot of data and they never use it. And uh, it seems like, yeah, you, you were talking about uh, collecting a lot of data and we need to use it and to, in order to get the benefit out of the, of the data. But uh, the data have costs. And uh, when you're talking about real-time collecting data, it really makes sense when we collect the real-time data outside in the field because the environmental factor is fluctuated all the times. But in PFAL, it is supposed to be very constant environment in PFAL. So my question is that, so what would be the cause of the, of the fluctuation in terms of the environment in, in PFAL? And do we really need to collect the real-time data for the analysis of the, in, in real time? Very good question. Any private company uh, which invest huge amount of money fail in the area of people. That's because they didn't work with you. <laughs> but me, with you means um, with plant physiologists. For example, I discussed with AI engineers for hours. Then finally I found they didn't know that the plant needs CO2 to grow. They thought they need oxygen instead of CO2. So in this way, if they analyze correct data, they cannot find anything. So we have plant scientists and engineers, engineers must work together to get inspiring uh, finding. I think. OK? <laughs> So, plant scientists need to be more positive to work with engineers. But first, we misunderstand each other. And we, spend, we have to spend much time to understand each other. But we have to overcome this problem. Okay? Okay, uh, regarding to breeding program, I'm very interesting about this because uh, when we breed some variety of plants, we need a huge of area to do selections. So in this case, in in PFAL, is uh, of course you you mentioned that we can do the breeding program together with the production program uh, parallelly. And I, I just would like to ask how possible and how many years further would be happen and will be released for the new varieties of, of some plant in, in PFAL and how big of the market for seed for PFAL? Oh. Well, as you know, we need around 10 years to get a new cultivar for open field crops, yeah? sometimes 15 years. But if you use PFAR, maybe three, four years. I think, I believe. Because we can collect all the related data and analyze very efficiently. But, I don't know, 15, maybe 15, nearly 15 years ago, nobody thought that computer can win with a professional chess player. But now, computer, can defeat human professional very easily. So 
we have to challenge. The theoretically, we can, but I don't know when. But I think I started research for PIFA 50 years ago, when I was 27. Yeah. <laughs> but all people laughed at me. Yeah, so it took 50 years, but maybe within five years it will be actualized. Because at that time, PFR researchers are only five or six all over the world, in the world. Now maybe 500 or 1,000 from different fields. Okay. Actually, 10 years ago, nobody thought we can use LED for PFAR. It was very, very expensive. It can be used, it could be used only for signal, not for energy. Okay. Any more questions?